10 a.m. The time is 12.30. Let's cross over now to Asian Network Report with Rosina Sini. Britain on digital TV and online. This is BBC Asian Network. Report. Thanks, Wax. Our top story today, the family of the 7-7 ringleader speak out for the first time about the way they were treated after the London bombings. I was shocked. I was shocked when they mentioned uh, Muhammad Siddiq Khan. They thought he was my son. I said, he's not my son. He's my son-in-law. We've got an exclusive report on that. Also on the programme, a vigil in Salford for the Indian student shot dead on Boxing Day. Mainly the local community has come out and they're showing their support and trying to say that you know, they're not bad people. A man's due in court later charged with Anuj Bidve's murder. Suki's got your sports. India's batsmen failed to cope with Australia's quicks. The Nugos played on. It's not happening just yet at the Sydney Cricket Ground. There will be one more goodbye for Tendulkar at the Sydney Cricket Ground. He was batting beautifully. And Sri Lanka failed to contain South Africa on the first day of the third and final test. And also coming up before one, time's running out before nominations close for the first ever Asian Football Awards. Players that are succeeding within the game like Michael or Danny Bath. So it's just encouraging the awareness of what they do and hopefully establishing more role models for the future. I'm Rosina Sini with Suki Heyer. This is Asian Network reports. BBC.co.uk slash Asian Network. He was the ringleader of the London Bombers. Now the family of Muhammad Sadiq Khan have spoken for the first time to the media. His mother-in-law and brother-in-law have told Asian Network they've not been able to go back to their home in Dewsbury, where they were questioned by police shortly after the attacks. And they say although they've condemned the bombings, they were unfairly targeted by the press who've ruined their lives. Asian Network's Sanjeev Batu has this special report. We just try not to remember the past and hope the future is better for us all. Farida Patel arrived in Dewsbury in 1967. She married and had children. Her daughter wed Mohammed Sidi Khan. Then, a few years later, their lives changed forever. It sort of hit me when Scotland Yard came on the 12th of July. I heard loads of noise outside cars and vans. And when I opened the curtain window, I saw police. They said who they were and I asked them why. And they said, it's regarding the bombings in London. And I said, why my house? And they said they wanted to come in and speak to me. And what did you think? I was shocked. I was shocked when they mentioned uh, Muhammad Siddiq Khan. They thought he was my son. I said, he's not my son. He's my son-in-law. Farida says the bombings and the way they were treated by the police have ruined their lives. As a mother-in-law, I suffered a lot and I had a lot of harassment. I had to leave the beautiful bungalow and that still hurts me up to today. I cannot even go near the house or near that area. So all these years after, you've never been back to the house? I've never been back to the house. I just can't go back to that house. It hurts me so much, calling it a bomber's house. Even my children had difficulty because people used to see them say, and this is that part, of, they are the part of that family. But we just carried on and tried to sort of ignore sometimes the statements made. Is there one thing that really upset you? The scrutiny we got with my name, which I did not deserve. There is anger towards the police and the media as to the way they treated us. Farida's youngest son is Arshad. Mama Sidi Khan, I got quite close to him. We had a lot of um, mutual interests. We used to discuss a lot of the political issues and he was a really good person as well he used to come to house regularly fitted in with the family really well and he was just a normal everyday person he says it would be hard for any family to cope with the trauma they faced we got raided and i still don't know why the name started coming up on uh, on the tv when i found out it was him i mean i was completely shocked she's at tanwe hasi person did you know them as well yeah i got to know them because they used to come to see mama city camp he says the family did nothing wrong and are angry with how they've been treated a lot of the people they do tend to put you in a box and say, like, you know, you are a friend of the family of the terrorist bombers. The community treats you a bit differently. When you get raided, what the police do is they take all your belongings. A few of the stuff has been returned after six years. Like, we had our mobile phones, our Qurans get taken away, so many of our Islamic books get taken away. I'm trying to get back my uh, Xbox, which I want to give to my kids now, because it's so old. It's been six years. I'm as a gift to them now. I'm not going to play with it. It affects not only the family, it affects the community as well. The community then gets a bad reputation. Do you have any resentment as to what happened to you and your family?
nuclear family. But they've got my mother's house, which is a mother-in-law, but why didn't they go to the parents' house? Which criminal do we know that they go to the mother-in-law's house? And the repercussions of that was the house and the address and all our photos and my, uh, and my family's photos were spread across all the newspapers, not only in this country, but in the rest of the world. I think the media and the police were very responsible. I feel nothing but confession for the, all the families involved in the bombing. We are completely against what happened and we hope that this doesn't happen again. The Metropolitan Police, who carried out inquiries into Mohammed Sidi Khan, say they conducted a complex and lengthy investigation and there's an ongoing process in place to return property where possible. But they can't discuss information on any individuals who may have formed part of this inquiry. Still to come on the programme.